awards. This is a celebration of blackness, of black culture, of black entertainment, of black excellence. And when you do something like this, you got folks outside the community. See, see that? See that? TMZ talking about it. NBC talking about it. CNBC talking about it. CBS talking about it. And that's what we celebrate. We as a community are going to be held accountable for that. Subliminally, subconsciously, people going to look at us with raised eyebrows and think as a community, oh, you down with that. You cool with that. That's what you celebrate. Sometimes it's really, really hard to not let that other part of this brother out of me. You know, there's, there's your search you don't say about black people. Because to Willie D, to phase on, make no mistake about it, I'm not scared. Not even a little bit. But unlike y'all, I'm going to remember that y'all are brothers. And so I'm not going to go there. See, what people miss is, so Willie D and I probably never speak in life, and that's cool. Don't know him, never met him. If I did, I'm sorry, I don't recall. Stooge, that's one of the names you called me. Called me a monkey. If you're wondering why I closed my eyes just now, it's because I did a quick prayer and I'm getting yoked. Not whether you can win or lose in a fight. It's not whether you. He claimed that he said a, he said a prayer. I mean, he said a prayer uh, not to get in. My ass. That's what he said. He said a prayer not to get in my. Ass. Let me tell you something, coconut. That ain't a prayer that's been invented that can come true enough to make you get in this. This says exit only. That's documented. I ain't got to sit up here and act tough. I ain't got to do all that. I don't want to do all that. My record is documented. That. I don't hear nothing like that from about you, Stevie. Nothing. So I don't believe you. You're upset because I called you a monkey. I called you a monkey because I don't respect you. Additionally, when you don't respect somebody, when you got something against somebody, when you identify somebody as an enemy, anything goes. Anything goes once you identify an enemy, especially when I identify an enemy of my people. All skin folk and kin folk, so you ain't fooling me just because you saying how important you are to the black community. You ain't fooling me because I've been watching you for years. I'm not impressed by you throwing us a bone every now and then and saying something cool about the black community or saying something cool about one of the athletes when you spend most of your time dogging the black athletes, when you spend most of your time going hard, harder on your own people than you do anybody else. In order for Stephen A. Smith to call somebody out that's not black, he got to be called out. Then he going to find Stephen S. I'm going to say this to my Emma. It's actually sad because you don't understand the vomit you spew. You have no idea what the you're talking about. I mean, did you even really grow up with black people? Did you see the struggle? Because it sounds like, I mean, you was that guy that your daddy would bring you up to the park and you had on long white socks and he would be, hey, did you, did you even grow up with a black man in the house? Were you adopted by a white family? Is that how you got that job? Because I don't know 
You have no athleticism at all. I can beat you at any sport you name. Hockey, checkers, hopscotch, handball, badminton. How did you get that job, Stephen? Stephen A., you are a disgrace. A disgrace. Then you got the nerve to quote Jay Z? Like he's a barrier of light? Are you fing stupid? You were undercover. You want, you want to get out your black? You want, I'm going to get out here and I'm going to be black and I'm going to have to, I'm going to show you who I is. Show me, nigga! What you going to do about Willie D? Willie D, Willie, Willie D, fighting his sleep. You knock me out, here come Willie D, straight from Popeyes. Yo, 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 it's Big Ant, the spokesman, man. We back, another edition of Urban Politicians TV, UPTV. Make sure you stay on your pivot at all times, man. Had to come tap in, and first and foremost, I do want to once again send condolences to the entire families of O.J. Simpson, Nicole Brown, and Ron Goldman. The storyline that this is connected to, it still has family members and loved ones and people that are still dealing with those losses. So most definitely condolences to them and God bless their souls. And I had a link in the description where you could watch the clips in the beginning in full it from Stephen A. Smith, the script reader from ESPN, Bad Take and Only Bad Takes most of the time, and with Willie D and Faison Love got back at him again once he decided to respond to them calling him out. And Willie D spoke a lot more, went way more in depth, got his points off in full when you watch the whole thing. Faison Love went to Instagram a couple times and got at him as well more if you want to see that in the, the entire detail of the conversation. And I came back to speak on it in full to get everybody on page to what I stand on with this when it comes to him speaking on the black community, how he keeps saying at these times and comparing what we need to be doing to what people that are not black doing. No, bro, we don't need approval from TMZ, CBS, ABC, or other, any other news broadcast. They put OJ Simpson on the screen because he died in the past year they had other people that they posted on that screen as well that passed away as a segment of people that were black Americans who accomplished things and a hey, people might feel a way about it and that's fine if that's what they do. But when you come out here and tell us this makes the black community look away, oh, this is what they approve, this is what they approve after you say it out your own mouth in the segment that we don't even own BET. We don't even get the final say so on this platform. That is not being done by black people on what they air and choose not to air. So why are you even making this a black community thing, bro? Out of pocket, out of line, that's what I stand on because he keeps using this black community conversation as that. And as I already said before, it's not Stephen A that's the problem. The problem is he has millions of dollars from a billion dollar company being invested into him to polarize and make his voice heard. He has a team putting these storylines and these topics together for him. If it was just Stephen A, we wouldn't know that nigga. We didn't elect him in the black community to speak for us. We didn't say we vote Stephen A to go work for ESPN because us in the black community like his points for the black community. We like him. Nigga, you went in as a sports guy that was analyzing sports, then you turned it into all this other stuff. So you thinking that this is that and it's your place to speak for the black community, you never was that, bro. You chose that to try to run with it and we stopping it and calling it out. Willie D and Faison Love, they going at you the way they are because it's repetitive. You don't have too many times with the black community to be out of touch, speak out of turn and go overboard on black athletes or black topics, but then sow a lot of compassion for others. And that's just documented of how he been moving this whole time. We saw the stuff with Kyrie. You went overboard, you went too far. You come back three years later on behalf of Kenny Smith because he decided to go and tell us that he gave you that call back then, which you wasn't gonna never come out and say, hey man, yeah, I was going too hard and da da da. People was like, really? Jay Will had to argue with you on air in real time. And you still stood on it. 
That's a nigga that's out of touch. That's a nigga that's not understanding and don't really relate to the black community. Your most recent thing that was out of pocket, you jumped out there on Will Smith, called him out, said, hey man, the black community, we need to hear from you about what you did to Chris Rock. That's why the sales are down on your movie, the pre-sales and this and that. Not only were you wrong, again, speaking on the black community, the information you gave about the sales, the numbers, and the first week viewership was bad. It was wrong. You all the way wrong. It did the same thing that the last movie did, even more than the last movie. 100 million or something the first week or something in that nature. And I think 40% of the viewership was black in that. So what is you talking about, Stephen A? You getting bad information from your team. They giving you a script to read. Now, what you also need to understand, because you're making it real hard for yourself because you keep trying to fight back, you never going to be that guy. It just is what it is. You've already done too much. You come out again, and this is what people talking about. You're speaking on Ryan Garcia with him going online, calling people niggas with the hard ER, saying what he would do to George Floyd. It's only one thing to talk about that. You did a whole segment on this right here, bro. Got to talking about his career. And why you calling him out, you place blame on Devin Haney for taking a fight with him while he's overweight. That's not how Ryan Garcia went out. And I know it was ultimately his win over Devin Haney was ruled a no contest. I blame Devin Haney for that. What the hell you take the fight for? He came in three pounds overweight. He made no efforts to honor the, uh, to, to honor the contract. It was supposed to be for a title shot at the 140-pound division. But ultimately, he was ineligible for the belt because he came in three pounds overweight. And you're going to bet him $500,000 for every pound that he's overweight. And he's glad you gave, you gave you the million and a half that he owed you for being three pounds overweight. Come on, bro. You're the champion. You were undefeated. You should have never gave him that fight. If he's not willing to honor the clause, so be it. To fight Javante Davis, he had to have a weight clause, a hydration clause, or... First of all, this conversation on that topic right there, Ryan, Ryan Garcia's segment, all you need to talk about was him taking the uh, PEDs. All this other stuff with the weight, that don't even matter. But this is fight week, bro. If Devin Haney don't take that fight with him being three pounds overweight, he lets his fans down. He didn't want to cheat his fans. He didn't want to cheat the sport. It lets the other back end purse down. He said, you know what? I have confidence in myself. I will still go fight Ryan Garcia even though he's overweight. But you such an out of touch nigga. And this is why people question you being a nigga. Because why are you even talking about this on the segment? You should only be tackling him saying the N-word. And if you want to get into his PED usage, shouldn't no blame be getting placed on Devin Haney right here, nigga. You keep proving why you not that. Stop trying to be that guy. Go get your money, but keep the black community out your mouth, dog. You not that. We didn't pick you for that. You got a job. And make this clear for the people who don't get it. He's not being talked about by us because we respect him, because we hating on him. If you were having your own independent YouTube channel by yourself, we wouldn't be talking about you. We are talking about you because ESPN is behind you. Disney is behind you. The corporate dollars and corporate relationships and corporate advertising are pushing you and making sure so your scale is far as possible. So we have to, we don't have to see you, but the people are going to see you and narratives get created off of what they polarizing. And the more and more you use the black community, certain people who not black might think we believe what you believe in. We don't believe nothing you talking about. It is what it is with me. Cause it's gotten to this point now too. I was talking to my nigga BP and he said, man, bro. And I, and I felt the same way. Like nigga, I'm watching this nigga and I'm really getting frustrated. I like, I'm really mad at this nigga. Like I'm watching what he's saying and the way he keeps speaking on the black community. This ain't got nothing to do with the storyline of the other stuff. So it's like, bro, you not that nigga and you pushing a bad narrative. And I'm like, I'm getting mad. Is this what this nigga goal is? Cause he wins either way. Whether I'm watching it, I'm mad. It makes people click it. You can look at the comments. Thousands of people ain't agreeing what he's saying in the black community. What are you talking about? Why are you trying to tell BET they need to be like the Oscars and not honor this person, not do that? Or we need to worry about their approval. I'm like, is this part of the plan to keep him alive? Like the controversy sells. So if you're mad at the nigga watching or you're giving a certain type of engagement and it's crazy because I'm not a tough guy. 
I'm not like that. So me, for me to get this anger about you, when I hear this, I'm like, bro, this nigga is either one doing a very good job that they wrote out on the script, or he really that out of touch. But either way, you're out of pocket, you're out of line, your, ta your takes are trash, and we're going to turn your segment of ESPN First Take from Stephen A. Smith, the script reader, trash take. Tell me what y'all think. We got more coming, more videos, all that 1,000 for shit show. Stay on your pivot.